Hi guys, I'm Chris from Pine Top Jackson, coming to you once again from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Now, I grew up playing cheap guitars, and as such, I maintain an affinity for cheap guitars. Uh, you've seen lots of Squire Affinity Strats on my channel. Uh, this is not another one. This is an even cheaper guitar. What I've got here is a Starcaster by Fender. Let's check it out. So I came to know the name Starcaster as a modern department store guitar. You could find First Stacked at Walmart, but you could find Starcaster by Fender at Target, Best Buy, Costco. So right away there's a perceived increase in value over the First Stack, as Target and Best Buy are usually considered slightly more upscale than Walmart. Also, Fender gave its famous name to the budget line, giving a huge advantage in the department store guitar market of the 2000s, which was basically targeting clueless parents wanting to buy their kid a first guitar. But the name Starcaster goes back a bit earlier. And where would a guitar theology story be without some convoluted twist of confusion, huh? In 1975, trying to compete with Gibson in the semi-hollow body market, Gene Fields of Fender Research and Development created the Fender Starcaster. It was pretty unique, a thin semi-hollow offset body with an original swooping headstock, but it was not popular, and so was only made from 1976 to 1982. But the Fender Starcaster has absolutely nothing to do with the Starcaster by Fender budget line that started in 2001. These Starcasters all had strat-shaped bodies. The first ones had a distinct arrow-shaped headstock, similar to the Fender Swinger, but that proved to be too ugly for the mom and dad at Christmas time market and was quickly changed to the instantly recognizable Stratocaster style headstock. The line was removed from the Fender website in 2007, but you can still buy them new at stores and on Amazon.com until 2014. Now, why did Fender stop promoting these guitars halfway through their run? I think it's that they started to catch drift of something I've been saying ever since I saw one of these guitars at a Target years ago, and that's that it's watering down their brand. It cheapens their image. Yes, the name association with a $1,500 Stratocaster is going to entice some beginner, hopeful guitarists to spend $100 for their product at Best Buy, but what I think about, and I don't think I'm the only one, is what's the association with cheaply made guitars sold in department stores going to do to the image of the expensive quality Fender guitars? The Starcaster by Fender line ceased in 2014. I see them floating around the underbelly of the used guitar market all the time. They can be found cheaper than a Squire Affinity, and rightly so, but just like the first acts, I see their prices slightly climbing year after year. In 2019, Fender gave the Starcaster name to Squire, not to continue the budget line, but to resurrect the semi-hollow offset guitar of the 70s. You can buy a new Affinity Starcaster for $300 or a classic Vibe Starcaster for $400. I haven't had the chance to play one yet. Time will tell how they hold their value. All right, let's take a look at the serial number on this Starcaster. Now, I've dealt with a number of Squire Affinities in the past, and their serial number is pretty easy to comprehend. Uh, the other Squire models are not quite as easy. Uh, I figured that this Starcaster would have something different, but look, it looks identical to uh, the way the Affinities work. It says, uh, designed and backed by Fender, crafted in Indonesia, serial number IC0808636. Uh oh, 666. This guitar was made in Indonesia. IC stands for Court. It was made in the Court Factory in 2008, and I think we can assume August of 2008. Now, we've also got something else here. There's another sticker. This also says Made in Indonesia, and there's a bit of a glare on it. It's a shiny sticker. It says 91119117. I have no idea what that indicates. Why does it have a different serial number than what's printed on here? And we also have one more thing. Let me take the camera off. Down, um, no, not on the neck plate. Down here on the, the cavity control plate, we have an inspected by sticker. Inspected by pl uh, Putra, P-U-T-R-A. And then it's pretty faint. We can make out, it says 02 August 2008. All right, let's take a look at this Strat HSS. Looks like a rosewood fretboard. 
and a painted headstock. All right, we've got six pounds, 9.8 ounces. All right, let's take the body thickness here. Forty point five millimeters thick. Right at four zero millimeters. At the twelfth, we've got fifty one point five millimeters. Let's take the neck thickness here at the first fret. Twenty one point seven millimeters, and then at the twelfth fret, twenty two point six. Pretty smooth routing in here. All right, we've got some information stamped on here. What do we see? All right, nothing stamped on the end of it, but there is some stampage right here. Let's see if a flashlight will help us read that. Uh, what does it say? Is that a K or an R? It looks like R O K I M. Oh, uh, then it's a little illegible there. And then it has something right here. This this whole does it say one? I believe that says one August. And it looks like a two thousand, but that's probably an eight because we saw from the serial number above uh, two thousand eight. So August two thousand eight. No marks inside the cavity here. Except we did find this, looks like a piece of sandpaper that was all the way back there. And it says that it passed quality control.